set up the game of Alhambra, first the game area will be set up. To do this, place the 54 building tiles in the bag included with the game. Next, put out the building market in the middle of the playing area. Four building tiles are drawn from the bag and placed in the squares in the building market, starting with one and ending with four. Next, locate the money card deck and take out the two scoring cards. Place these two cards to the side and shuffle the rest of the deck. In a two-player game, one of each of the number cards in each color will be removed. So there will only be two of each number in each color instead of three. Each player will now be dealt their starting money. To do this, the cards are flipped up from the deck in front of a player until their total is 20 or more regardless of the color of the money. When the total is 20 or greater, the player will take their money and the next player will be dealt their cards. After each player has received their starting money, four money cards will be placed face up next to the building market. The rest of the money cards will be divided into five roughly equal piles. The two scoring cards set aside earlier will be placed in these piles. The first scoring round card, which has an A on the top, will be placed into the second of the five piles. And the second scoring round card, which has a B on the top, will be placed into the fourth pile. Finally, all of the piles will be combined into one deck. The first pile will be on the top, and the fifth pile will be on the bottom. The scoring cards placed in these piles trigger scoring during the game. So placing them this way helps ensure that scoring will not occur too early or too late in the game. The whole deck of cards is then placed face down next to the building market. The final step to setting up the game area is to place out the scoring board somewhere to the side of the playing area. Each player will place one of their markers in their chosen color on the bottom left corner of the scoring track. After setting up the game area, each player will set up their player area. Every player will be given a starting tile that looks like this. All players also gain a counter in the same color as the marker they placed in their scoring track. The counter will be placed on their starting tile. Each player also gets a tile reserve board. Finally, they will place the money they were dealt earlier in their player area. From now on, the money that they have should be kept secret from all other players. If they are playing in a two-player game, there is an imaginary third player who will play the game with them. The imaginary third player will be given six building tiles drawn randomly from the bag. These tiles will be placed in the third player's player area in full view of both players. After setting up the game area and each player's area, they are ready to start the game. The player with the fewest number of cards dealt to them at the beginning of the game starts the game. If there is a tie for the fewest cards, the tiebreaker is the player whose cards equal the lowest amount. And if they are still tied, the youngest of the tied players goes first. During the game, players are trying to build their own Alhambra. To do this, they will choose one of three actions. Let's take a look at the three possible actions. During a player's turn, they may take any one of the money cards from the four face-up cards near the building market. If the card they take is of value 5 or less, the player is allowed to take more than one card. As long as all of the cards they take do not add up to more than 5. The color of the money cards taken doesn't matter. The money they gain will be placed with the rest of their money cards. A second action they can choose is to buy any one building tile from the market. They must pay at least the price shown on the tile. So they may pay more than the cost, but no change will ever be given. The money that they pay with must be the same color as the symbol that that tile is in. So orange money must be used to buy a tile in this location. Blue money must be used to purchase a tile in this location yellow money for this location, and green for this location. Any money used to purchase a building tile will be placed in a discard pile near the money deck. Any time that a player is able to pay the exact amount 
For a tile, they are allowed to choose another action to take, either taking money, buying and positioning another tile, or redesigning their Alhambra. Any building tiles that are purchased from the building market may be either immediately placed next to your starting tile or placed on your reserve board. In a two-player game, there is one more option players have when placing their building tiles they just purchased. They can also give the tile to the imaginary third player. This can often be a strategic move during the game to prevent other players from scoring points. While placing tiles next to your starting tile, there are several rules that must be followed. All building tiles must be placed in the same orientation. A good way to check that you are following this rule is to make sure that all of the numbers are in the same location on the tiles. So a building placed like this would not be allowed. Sides must be placed next to like sides. So a side without a wall must be placed next to a side without a wall. And a side with a wall must be placed next to another side with a wall. At least one side of a tile must be completely touching another full side of a tile so diagonal placement is not allowed. Tiles may not be placed in such a way that there is an open space surrounded by tiles on all four sides. So a placement such as this would not be allowed. Finally, you must be able to reach each new tile placed via a route from your starting tile. So even though a tile placed like this follows the rules of matching like sides, it does not allow the player to reach the new building without running into the wall, so this is not a legal placement. If a tile is placed on a reserve board, it is placed with all other tiles there. There is no limit to the amount of tiles that can be placed on the reserve board. The final option a player has during their turn is to redesign their Alhambra. There are three ways to do this. The first option is to take any one tile from your reserve board and add it to your Alhambra. The second option is to remove any one building tile, except for the starting tile, from your Alhambra and place it onto your reserve board. The third option is to exchange any one building tile from your reserve board with any one tile in your Alhambra and place the exchange tile from your Alhambra onto your reserve board. After a player finishes their turn, they refill any money they took with cards from the deck to replenish the supply back to four cards. They also replace any building tiles they purchased with new tiles drawn randomly from the bag. When the money and building tiles are fully replenished, the next player in clockwise order will take their turn and choose one of the three actions. The game consists of three different scoring rounds, two that will occur during the game when players draw the scoring card, and one that will occur at the end of the game. When a player draws a scoring card from the deck while replacing other cards, they place it to the side and continue filling the cards. After all of the cards have been replaced, the scoring will occur. During the first scoring round, the player with the most building tiles in the indicated color will score the indicated points. Each player will count up the number of building tiles they have in the indicated color. Any tiles a player has placed on the reserve board are not counted during scoring. If they have the most building tiles in their Alhambra, they will score the points indicated for that color and move their scoring marker up on the scoring track. If more than one player has a tie for the most building tiles in a color, they will divide the number of points that that color tile gives and round the number down to the nearest whole number. Finally, each player is awarded points for their longest continuous wall in their Alhambra. They do not count internal walls such as this in their longest wall. Each side of a tile with a wall gains them one point. So this player would gain four points for their longest wall. In a two-player game, the imaginary third player is awarded points if they have the most of any building tiles. The imaginary third player is not awarded points for having the longest wall. After the first scoring round, the imaginary third player is given six more building tiles 
randomly drawn from the bag. The second scoring occurs in the same way that the first scoring did, except this time the player with the most buildings in a color and the second most buildings in a color scores points. If more than one player is tied for the most amount of building tiles in one color, they will add up the points in both the first and second column for that color and divide it by the number of players tied. If one player had the most building tiles in a color and more than one player had the second most building tiles, the player with the most tiles would score the points in column one and the players tied for the second most would divide the points in column two by the number of players tied. Once again, each player gains points for their longest continuous wall in their Alhambra. One point for each side of a tile that contains a wall in their longest wall. In a two-player game, the imaginary third player is once again awarded points for having the most building tiles in any color, but not for their longest wall. After the scoring round is over, the third player gains more building tiles. This time, players count up the tiles remaining in the bag, and the third player is given a third of the remaining tiles, rounded down. The third and final scoring takes place when the game ends. The game ends when there are not enough building tiles remaining in the bag to fully replenish the market to four building tiles. When the game ends, any remaining building tiles are given to players. Any remaining tiles on the market are given to the player who ends the game with the most total value of money in that color. If two or more players tie for the most value of money in a color, that tile remains on the board. Any tiles a player gains in this way may be placed in their Alhambra, if they are able to. If they are not able to place the tile, it is placed in the reserve. Now final scoring starts. Only tiles in a player's Alhambra are scored. This time, players use the third scoring chart, which is found on the top of their player reserve board. Scoring occurs in the same way, but this time, the top three players can score. If more than one player is tied, they will split the points, as shown in round two. Scoring can be a bit confusing, so let's consider a few examples. If two players were tied for the most red buildings, they would add the points in the first and second columns to get 26, and divide that by two, so each player would gain 13 points. If three players were tied for the most red buildings, they would add up the values in all three columns to get a total of 28. They would divide that number by the three players tied, so each player would gain nine points. Finally, each player, once again, gains points for their longest continuous wall in their Alhambra. One point for each side of a tile that contains a wall in their longest continuous wall. The player who ends the game with the most points is the winner. In a tie, both players win.